Adopting OpenTelemetry in your applications is usually a process that comprises three steps. The first one is the coding of the instrumentation logic required to make your applications truly observable by creating telemetry data such as traces, metrics, and logs. The second step is the configuration of the open telemetry collector. This is the component of the architecture that takes your telemetry data as input and forwards to a compatible observability backend. And the third step is actually come up with strategies to spin up instances of your open telemetry collector. All of those tasks can be a little scary at first if you're coming into the observability world for the first time. But in this video, I'm going to show you how you can speed up all this process by using Amazon Q Developer. With Amazon Q Developer, you can create not only the code necessary for all of this to work, but also the configuration files. I'm going to start things off by explaining what's going to be our observability use case. Here, we have this microservice written in Go that essentially exposes a REST API over the port 808080. So I'm going to simulate here this API being invoked so you can see the response that comes from the API. So I'm going to use curl for that. And this is the invocation. And as you can see, it replies back, hello world. Nothing fancy on this. But our job here today is to instrument this code so all the execution of the microservice will start creating traces. And those traces are going to be used for us to be able to monitor the execution of the microservice on AWS X-Ray. We're going to start our instrumentation by opening a new chat window with Amazon Q Developer. And we're going to start this chat by typing slash dev. Slash dev is going to trigger the usage of the feature development. The feature development allows Amazon Q Developer to create entire new files within your project structure. So our prompt today is going to be add support for open telemetry into the project create traces for each function implemented in the microservice as well as the nested functions invoked. I'm going to hit enter and then the way Amazon Q Developer works with the feature development is like this. It's going to first give you a plan, an idea of how your implementation is going to look like. And you are going to be able to uh, evaluate and decide if you are going to accept or not, which is helpful for you to like, have a vision if maybe the implementation that's being suggested is good, or perhaps you have missed it in your prompt some of the details that you would like the generative AI to actually consider in the suggestion. So let's now review the plan that was created for us. So first is suggesting the inclusion of the libraries and the dependencies and the product, which kind of makes sense because whatever code is going to be generated, is going to require the backing libraries that implements all the functions that are going to be used. So, so far, so good. Um, it also recommending the creation of certain pieces of code in the main.go file, which is the file that we implement the microservice, to create the tracer. The tracer is the component on open telemetry that actually allows the creation of traces. So, so far, so good. And then is uh, suggesting the inclusion of some handlers, which makes sense as well for uh, nesting calls for the other functions. So I think so far, so good. I'm going to click on generate code so we can start seeing the code that is going to be included into the project. So these are going to be the files that Amazon Q Developer are going to either include in our product or modify. So I'm going to click insert code. And then now those files have been included into our product structure. So what I'm going to start doing now is the house cleaning to see what happened in the code now, in the code level. So I'm going to stop the execution of the microservice for now. And I'm going to check what are those compilation errors right here. So I'm going to start by checking the go.mod file. So usually, what happens when you include dependency on your projects, those dependencies might not be available in your development workstation or your laptop. So what I'm going to do, is, and for those of you that are uh, familiar with Golang, you know that you can include those dependencies by uh, using the go mod tidy command. So what those uh, instruction does is to force the inclusion of uh, create a local copy of those dependencies on your machine. So now those dependencies effectively exist 
in our uh, development machine. So now some of those dependencies might go away. Uh, sometimes, and this is, might be more like an, an IDE thing, you have to refresh the project so it can force the reading of those dependencies. So this is, like, it's, this is definitely the case of Visual Studio Code. So as you can see here, it refreshed. Uh, so now we're going to review, so at, at least for the dependency level, all the dependencies are here. So what we're going to do is to actually uh, start the review of the code that has been um, modified. So now we're going to, we still have like some compilation errors and bear with me that when you are using like technology like generative AI and Amazon Q developer, this is not necessarily like something very unusual. Like uh, it's going to be the best effort to create the code that's going to be functional for you. But sometimes you might need to do a little tweak at yourself. I, I call this the little 20 or maybe 10% of your implementation effort that you have to contribute with the uh, with the generative AI engine. So let's check one by one. So first of all, we don't need the context object. So that is kind of expected. So we what we can do is to create the context ourselves. And bear with me that when you use Amazon Q Developer in your IDE, this is also available. So there will be some code suggestions that you can also use at your uh, to your disposal to speed up the development. So you don't necessarily have to type all your way out for everything needed. So now that we solved the first compilation problem, now let's solve the second one. Now here, it seems to be a problem of types. So the value and argument, how from developer, it cannot be used here. So what this function is expecting is a HTTP handler. And apparently this is not what we are passing here. Let's start by fixing this function invocation here, hotel midware. So what's going on here is that this handler function is expecting a certain signature type. Uh, in this case, we're expecting this func. It's a pointer to a function that requires the response writer and a pointer to a request. So I think what's going on here, if we go to the function auto midware, this doesn't seem to comply with that uh, request. So instead of handler, I think what generative AI was meant to do is handler function, which is actually this response writer and pointer to a request combination. So if we go back to our OTHL meter invocation, now it seems to be uh, expected. Now we have to also fix the, the parameter being inspected here. It's a handler. And in this case, our hello function, the function that we had before, has this very unique signature, which is the response writer and the pointer to request. So once again, I think what's going on here is that the code generated, instead of using the handler functions, using the handler. So we're going to use the handler function here. So let's save it. And if we go back here, let's wait a couple seconds for the compiler to recognize the changes. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time uh, in Visual Studio Code, but there you have it. So now that part's been fixed. So is a, is a, like I mentioned before, uh, the generative AI engine suggested something, a, a code snippet that doesn't necessarily uh, fits 100% what your code is expecting. So you might need to do a little tweaks here and there from time to time. Sometimes it'd be 100% perfect, so you can celebrate when that happens. But uh, in reality, you have to set up the right expectation when using technology like generative AI that is going to be used the best effort to provide you with the code that you're expecting. Same here. I think what we need to do here is to replace this with the schema URL. That's the first attribute is, is being expected here. And then we're going to use a version of the SimCom for the conventions that we're going to use in Open Telemetry version 21. That's the version that I know for sure that's how it works. So as you can see here, just by changing the version of the dependency, we were able to fix the problem. So sometimes you might need to do these little tweaks, but in general, there's a bunch of code here that was created for us automatically that provided us with the jump start. So that, that, that's what really matters. So now that we have fixed the compiler issues on the code generated, we can start the second step of the instrumentation process, which is the configuration of the open telemetry collector.
I'm going to continue this series with the next episode where I will use Amazon Queue Developer to create a configuration file for the Open Telemetry Collector, implement the collector using Docker Combos, and start the initial tests with the instrumented microservice. See you soon, builder.